Away from that, for nearly a decade, Nigeria's government has indicated interest in increasing its focus on agriculture with the aim of ensuring food security and sustainable development. There are obvious reasons for doing so, as agriculture accounts for about a quarter of the country's GDP and nearly half of its workforce. Aside from representing uh, the largest share of non-oil exports in Nigeria, agriculture has the most potential to lift millions of people out of extreme poverty. In 2014, African leaders, including Nigeria's government, agreed to a set of policy commitments to accelerate inclusive agricultural development on the continent, called the Malabo Declaration. However, a recent review of the progress of these commitments shows Nigeria underperforming on majority of its obligations. Low government investment in agriculture is the main driver of low agricultural productivity and food insecurity. Nigeria has 190 million citizens, but just 2% of the federal government's budget goes to the agricultural sector. This is less than 1,000 naira, or that's about $2.50 per person annually. In Rwanda and Ethiopia, where agriculture is booming, governments spend more than 7% of their budgets on the sector. Rwanda spent 7.5% of its budget on agriculture, as of 2017, while Ethiopia spent 16.8%. Increased investment in agriculture is desperately needed in Nigeria. Let's make more sense of this. I have Chief Executive Officer Orbital Solutions, uh, Adewale Adegoke. He joins me live in the studio. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Let me start with this, this uh, report before this. Investment in agriculture. Yes. Um, we've seen this, just, this government, this aggressive investment by this government to actually improve the sector. How will you assess it? Well, I think the federal government has done, and some state governments, they've done quite a lot in um, accelerating investments in agriculture, you know, as a means of diversifying to non oil sector, and um, with the potential of contributing majorly to the national GDP. Um, however, there's still quite a lot to do in the area of uh, governance, you know, policies, and uh, for the federal government or the state governments to make more inclusive participatory policies, you know, that will actually deliver economic value to the people of Nigeria, there's a need for um, data, you know, mm -hmm. disaggregated data, because I, I, the, these policies have to be informed one way or the other. And um, when you have policies being developed, you know, or you have um, the moves being made by the government, you know, to um, provide succor in some, um, uh, some sectors, sectors. Of, the, of the economy, you know, without accurate data available to guide their processes, you know, that is when you start having issues. You see what I mean? I mean, from what you just um, initiated a few minutes ago, yeah. um, the percentage of the budget, you know, budgetary exactly. allocation exactly. To, to agriculture, we eat every day. It's a no-brainer. No Even before, I mean, I'm sure you ate before coming here, <laughs> all of, of us, 190 million ready demand for food. I mean, I don't, I don't, it, this, is, this is not toothpaste or this, you have to eat, you have to drink water, you know. So I, why the government, you know, al although uh, in all fairness, you yeah. know, the federal government, they've had different approaches, you know, which yeah. has worked, you know, and they've continued to um, push these approaches okay. thus far. Now we have the um, agricultural transformation agenda between 2011 and 2015, and you now have the agricultural promotion policy, you know, between 2016 and 2020. And within the agricultural promotion policy, you have ICT, you know, awareness creation, communications, you know, as the part, a key part of the policy thrust. You see what I mean? Within this, uh, this promotional policy. Mm -hmm. With that, I believe the f smallholder farmers, you know, especially those in the rural areas who are constantly neglected, you know, from this approach, you know, they will be, they will be part of, they'll be taken into the ecosystem, you know. So that means the policies, you know, or the policy frameworks will be more inclusive. It will take account of these guys. Now, technology plays a huge role. Yeah, indeed. I, 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 just ask yeah. my next question, the role of ICT Fact. in agricultural development. Yes. You know, because I, you're already touching on it, but I, yeah. I want you to expand it more. What really, in specifics, will, how can this help pro improve agriculture? Fantastic. Let's, when we talk about ICT, agri-tech, let's even um, unbundle it, you know. We have data, we have ICT, we have laptops, you know, smart devices, GPS, all of that. We have drone technology, you know. However, the, uh, still going back to the governance issue, you know. I mean, for you to register your drone in Nigeria today, 
I mean, <laughs> it, 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 it's counterproductive. You Sorry, see what I mean? You know, so when you have businesses, I mean, it is estimated that Nigeria is currently losing over from a market of over $20 billion of the drone market. You see what I mean? So if you do not have this um, structure that will permit improvements or emergence of new businesses, SMEs, to support farmers, you know, using current technologies, then you, we have issues. Now, let's go back to the ICT. Yeah. Now, ICT, what do they do? ICTs provide data to derive information, you know, to support agriculture. So that means you can forecast weather, you know, you notice, we start, I was in St. Lucia the whole of January, you know, advising the St. Lucia government. While I was there, I was told that rain had started falling in Lagos State. In January, it doesn't happen that way. You see what I mean? So all these irregularities, data, artificial intelligence, will be able to take it, you know, and project it and forecast so that it can interpret it and localize it for the farmers. They can understand that, oh, in the next two weeks, this is going to be the amount of volume of rainfall that we'll experience. Mm -hmm. These are the steps that we need to take, you know, to protect our crops. Mm -hmm. Climate resilient, you know, agriculture has to be practiced. Everything comes from information, which is derived through the use of ICT. Geography plays an important role as well. Farmers in this country, there's a need for the federal government or state governments to know where the farmers are, where they're operating, okay. where these farms are. Now, the federal government under the Climate Change Adaptation um, for Agribusiness Program, CASP, got some funding from IFA, the International, um, International Fund for Agricultural Development, you know, and they, re they, they, they published a tender to map 250,000 farmers in the northern states, seven northern states. Um, fortunately, my company put in for the tender and we won it. You see what I mean, you know? We actually developed, we had developed a platform called AgriExchange two years prior to that, you know, because we had to think ahead that, look, this is where the business, agri-business agri will get to, you know? Now, the federal government has started this move, you know? Other states are picking it up. Ekiti State, Ondo State, you know. A matter of fact, Ondo State right now, they are training a hundred community youth, which my company will be delivering to training, you know, to be able to facilitate private sector driven extension services. This is a component of the policy thrust of this agriculture promotion policy by the federal government, Federal Minister of Agriculture. So with that in place, you can see that the government is already setting the foundation, sustainable foundation, mm -hmm. to be able to push improvements of food from farm to table. You see what I mean? If you look back, <coughs> um, the Honorable Minister for Agriculture said something minister. regarding, you know, how Nigeria's is economy has faltered, you know, in the past years. One thing he said is, when you start the disrupting the inflow of um, imports, food imports, you start creating enemies. With, sometimes we think, is it not just to grow, grow crops and we take, no. I thought about that because I think many say we need to be self-sufficient yes. before we do Absol that. Absolutely. Did we do that, you know, in case of rice. Yes. And now we're doing it even in the textile yes. industry. Yes, yes, so yes. So are we really self-sufficient before we make some of these moves? We are not self-sufficient yet. We are not getting there yet. However, for us to get there, you see the rot of over 56 years mm. cannot be stored by in four years. You know, that's the reality of the situation. But the federal government, at this point, they've put things, uh, the, the, I mean, the frameworks in place to be able to spur, you know, this sort of, um, 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 how would I call it, activities, yeah. you know, that will create a sustainable environment for agribusiness in Nigeria. So let me give you an example. Now, you now have these states going into heavy on data, heavy on agribusiness, heavy on strategic linkages. You see what I mean? These are processes that will actually generate that self-sustenance. You see, we ha also have to look at the human capacity. You know, I I we are human beings. You know, we like stuff from overseas. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you. You, you see what I mean? You know, so uh, social reengineering has mm. to come in place. Mm. That takes years. Mm. But you see, again, if we carry on, at least try to understand what the federal government is doing, mm. we will be able to see that. Look, these are the issues. This is the um, this um, are the approach approaches rather you know that the federal government is using to be able to create a sustainable agribusiness environment and then we'll be able to move you know further to the next level but right now we are not sustainable but we have processes in place to take us to the promised land finally now where do we go from here what are the quick wins for us to actually get what we want from the agricultural sector it all needs to be done almost 200 million people need yes, to be fed absolutely. food security what are the quick ones as we round up first now we have 
One, insecurity. If you notice, you know, the insecurity insurgencies, you know, they're actually attacking full baskets of the nation. That one has to be resolved. Number two, data. ICT is key. The federal government has Empower Agro, you know, which is private sector driven um, um, agronomic service advisory. Yeah. They need to support them with technology. That is why the drone regulations need to be taken care of, you know, kind of things, to be able to move this. Then again, you come in, youth in the community, also they need to be trained to be able to support farmers, you know, in data collection, in providing access to data to be able to support these farmers. The federal government and state government, they need to take the issue of data and ICT seriously. Mm -hmm. Remember, ICT is a means to an end, not the end in itself within the agricultural sector. The end is using technology to optimize agricultural production and facilitate aggregation. Aggregation is the end. ICT is what will make it happen. If you need to export cocoa, you mm. must export and prepare cocoa to the specifications and standards of the overseas buyers. Yeah. You need to be able to identify the farmers, use IC to do that using drones with multispectral sensors to do crop health analysis, you know, all of that. However, if you don't have that, what do you do? We still be doing the same thing, expecting the same result. Yeah. That is a little bit of malady, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Show. It's my really pleasure. incisive looking at agriculture and what we can actually achieve in this part my, of the my world. My pleasure. Thank you for spending the afternoon with us.